21 and a half k's to go. The Deegan is coming up. They've got sight of them just up there, this part of the road. You can see it's a headwind for these riders now. None of them wanting to ride on the front. This is like the race a... fourth place, isn't it now? Yes, I'd say so, yeah. 123. Yeah, I think it's fair to say so. They'll be. I think they're all expecting attacks on this next climb on the Tegenberg. It's one of those climbs that is 20 seconds too long, 10 seconds too long for everyone. That top part just grabs you and bites you very, very quickly. It's a climb that you can do extremely fast or you can absolutely blow your lights out just before the top and with a downhill straight after it's small road, it's hard to get back on and just have those twists and turns to be able to make time up again. Three years ago, it was climbed 14 times in one race when it was the Belgian National Championships. Dries de Bont was the winner then. Thumbs up here from Tadej Pogacar. Is this going to be his launch pad attempt? We will see. It's the last realistic chance for him to make the difference, isn't it, Adam? On a running like this with three of them, it's hard to say. I'd say no. I'd say that he's going to attack and the other two riders, you know, there are possibilities in a three to go up against each other. But in terms of terrain that suits Bogaccia, where he can factually make a difference, this is definitely one of them. And he's in the, the perfect cat. spot to do so from the back. The cat. The cat and mouse stuff can give anybody an advantage, can't it? But in terms of terrain, this is the last bit of his terrain left. And that's a nickname for the climb, the mushroom climb. But interestingly, I'm going to see these riders come through. No, he didn't. I was going to say, Van der Poel looked like he went to get on Wout Van Aert's wheel. Wout Van Aert swinging off, look, looking around, waiting for it. Pogaccia just taking his time to come through a little bit there. All watching each other again like they were on the... What is the flipping nickname of that kind? Carnamel Bake Strat that they just went up. Van der Poel, Pogacar, Van Aert, all together. The organisers dreamed this last night when they went to bed. The top yep. three racers, the biggest names, all battling it out at the front of the E3 Saxo Classic. The Edri Press, Harald Becker, as we've known it down the 65 years that it's been raced. Is he going to go? Is he going to go? Van der Poel on the front. I think if you go on the top now for these riders, sorry, Rob, it's just too late. It's like Pog did on the last couple of climbs. He needs to go from top to bottom to make it super hard to make that difference. I think if they go at the top, these riders have got enough fast, fast twitch muscles. They're responsive enough. They're explosive enough to be able to respond to it. Nobody's ever won San Remo and the Ed Repress in the same year. But there's a Ooh. good chance that that record could change. And here we go. Let's see because it's Fanart who decides to make his move. Has he been waiting? Is this the moment? I'm not sure. We will see. The minute Pogacar can follow, Van der Poel, I think, can do with ease as well. And there we go, that... ready to go over the top, and no big move really, or big enough to make any difference was made. I don't think it was a move. I don't, I just don't, I don't know what that was. <laughs> it wasn't an attack. <laughs> it wasn't explosive enough. It was just like it was... This sounds really... Bad, but I think. Think about looked, what you're going to say and if he's going to be listening to you on the replay tonight, Adam. <laughs> he might do, and it's fine if he does. It, it kind of looked like he was in a breakaway in a Grand Tour where he was just sneaking some KOM points in. Do you know what I mean, though? It, it wasn't an attack, it was just sort of a roll through on the top. But behind, anyway, Madwas accelerated Filippo Garner at the back, suffering Jorgensen on his wheel. It's Madwas with Garcia Cortina, and now you've got. For now. now then, listen. Shake of the head from Pogacar, and there was a question from Van der Poel. Laughing. I think they're laughing. They're just having fun. I don't think. I don't think there's anything serious being said. I think they're just laughing, and they're not doing it quietly either. Wout Van Aert would have been able to hear that if there was any chats like that. I think they're just. Oh, they're all talking. See, there's nothing. I don't think there's anything to be said there that is going to make significant difference. They're probably asking each other about God knows what. But yeah, just having a bit of fun. He's saying, is there anything you can't do? Curling.
into the final 18 kilometers of the mini tour of flanders the e3 harlbecker 18 case no hills left 17 hellinger already ridden the extra cobbled sectors are done as well it's now the run in back towards where we started in the town of Harlbecker. And right in the heart of cycling Oof. country. Fourth place is up for grabs, and Stefan Kung wants it. Stefan Kung followed by Jorgensen and Ivan Cortini there. Jumping across to his teammate, Jorgensen, by the looks of things. He's got a bit of distance, so it's not too much of a problem. A Horwich chasing behind. I wonder if they've been able to drop Philly Bogana. No, they haven't. He's still there. Soren Kraus still in there as well. Well, as well as Bogaccia being at the front, if you want to see how cycling's changed in the last few years, there's no Sudal quick-step representation in any of the two front groups. But in the second chasing group, Movi Star have two riders <laughs> looking for a top five. I'm laughing. Sorry, I'm not laughing. It's brilliant to see. It's like we spoke about earlier. It's, times have changed. It's different now. And I think just, just the way that training is adapted the way that rides have been able to adapt to training more and thrown into races is it's brilliant here is fanart and the two proper flemish cobbled classics we've had so far on opening weekend we saw two demonstrations from jumbo visma exhibitions that's not happened for the third time there's an e-bike just alongside them there, pulling along. I thought someone was attacking them, but I think it was just the, a mountain bike e-bike sneaking up. Mahoric almost getting back with the contention there. Soren Kraut looked to make that big effort, sprinted across, but looked like his legs had gone bang. We can't quite see him yet. There he is on the left-hand side, trying to get onto Mahoric's wheel, going backwards once again. Van Hooydonk, don't forget, he's been sat pretty. Oh, this is a big effort. You can see the race in the faces of these riders, can't you? Every single one of them. It's hard, it's hell. Wow. Van Hoydonk is getting across to this. You can see he's been being able to sit on the back. Mahoric right on the last limit there, just looking to get in that little bit of shelter. Van Hoydonk, I say he's getting on, not quite. Home to another big race in Hoygem. Haller in Hoygem. Quite as big as this, though, and you've got the defending champion at the front, Wout van Aert. Only four riders have ever successfully defended their title here. Cancellara in 2011. Before that, Bona had won four on the bounce in the mid noughties Jan Brass won three on the spin as well. The same number of successive victories as the famous Rick van Looy. It's been over a decade since anybody was able to defend their title in uh, E3 Saxo Classic. Just looking at this now, surely the likes of Pogaccia has got to try and start to play a little bit, start to put in a few little digs here and there, start to try and just toy with the riders a little bit. They, he knows Van Aert's fast, he knows that Van Der Poel is fast. It's a very difficult race, and at the end of this, the sprinting dynamic does change ever so slightly, obviously, but for Van Aert, surely he's got to be hoping for, let this come to a sprint and hopefully my legs can do it. And I think for Van Der Poel, either way, which will go. And I think for Bogatri, he'll want to try and get rid of at least one of them. I wonder that what might size... Sound obvious. So... Sorry, I that wonder might what sound size... obvious. <laughs> it might do. But I'm just wondering what size sofa the organisers have ordered this week for these three. Nice, nice. Um, hopefully a two-seater again, because they were brilliant images. Of course, it was Philly Bogana and not Tadej Pogaccio who was with the other two last week, but some of the best cycling photographs off the bike we've seen for a while. It was Very... memtastic, wasn't it, on the internet anyway? Yeah, absolutely brilliant. And Van Hooydonk, Rob, has not been able to get across. He's in that group chasing just behind but he wasn't able to make that juncture Mahoric just did gap is coming down 109 into the final 15 kilometers we've just seen a conversation between Pogaccia van der Poel and van Aert Sean Kelly's just been in touch and he said maybe they were asking Pogaccia if he's happy with third place <laughs> Oof. 
I like it. The king has spoken. <laughs> he doesn't miss a beat, does he? No. On 10 now as the wind is absolutely howling again. Cross head at the minute. This is exactly what you were telling me was going to happen towards the end, Adam. Yep. Cross, cross head, slightly more cross, not too much headwind, but the group behind, you know, it is basically four against three here. Um, you can see that gap around 110. These riders will start to play a bit coming into the finish, so the gap will probably come down, whereas the other riders will keep the speed and attack from that speed. They'll look at each other a little bit, but they want to get as close as they can. Van der Poel there just dropping his heel down at the back, just freewheeling and trying to stretch that hamstring out. You can see the wind. Crikey. Mm -hmm. Not quite Geraint Thomas being blown off the side of the road stuff, but we're approaching that. We are approaching it indeed. Look at Mahoric, just the way that he rides, like we talk about how riders can recover. Mahoric just pushing a bigger gear there on the flat bit, rolling it along, dropping his heart rate slightly. We've seen him down the Poggio famously last year, coming out of the corner in a really small gear, really getting on top of that cadence, and bang, 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 straight into a bigger gear to try and drop the heart rate again. That's all he's doing now. He's just trying to lower the heart rate, try and recover a little bit. It's not in many races that the last 20 kilometres are a little more calm in terms of the action, but we're on Castle Watch with 13 k's to go. They do things differently in Belgium. They do. Pogaccia on the radio. God knows what he's going to be asking. There was another look back again from Van der Poel and a question there. Now Pogaccia's on the radio again. I hope the question's asked afterwards. I do as well. It's hard Even to know. Even if it's just a funny answer, Adam. Yeah, it's hard to know how close these people, the, the riders are in terms of friendships. Because that's another thing, you know, if I was in this situation and one of my mates was in there that I really got along with I'd be trying to talk to him a little bit and be like flipping heck this is hard isn't it <laughs> and just make try and make light of the situation they're in but we don't know how close they are we don't know how the friendship is we know that they're all they get along well enough we know that Van Aert and Van der Poel have got that mutual respect we don't know how good of friends they are necessarily um, we don't know how any of like really any of them are we don't know how close they are as friends either so who knows, they might be teaming up against Van Aert or they might not be, I just, you don't know. I heard it mentioned by uh, a couple of very famous ex-professionals at the weekend, actually, about how surprised they were about how friendly everybody was mm. when, when Van der Poel won at the weekend. <laughs> Pogaccio was one of the first to congratulate him. I think it's one of those things, isn't it, is that you're not um, you're not beaten by some, I'm going, to, I'm going to say random person, but you've not been beat randomly. And I think these guys, they're, they're going to compete like this in hopefully many years to come. So they probably all do get along well, and there's probably is, well, there is that respect between them, that's for sure, that they can um, congratulate each other and just say, look, I've fairly been beaten outright by a better rider here. We're not far from the final 10 kilometres now on the way back to Harald Becker. Alpacinda Koenig, Jumbo Visma, UAE Emirates are all at the front. As I've said previously, this is the sort of stuff that the organisers of this race will have dreamt of last evening. The biggest tune being belted out by the top three tenors. Gap's coming down though, Rob. Not nice. by a lot. But it's sneaking down a little bit. A few strong voices in this changing group, aren't there, as well? Kung, been right up there in some of the very best cobbled classics. Mohoric, remember, fourth in this race last year. Garcia Cortina was always touted as somebody who could ride these races, but has never really shown his best. And Jorgensen, we saw him in stage racing in Oman, but he looks like somebody who can do a bit of everything as well. Super, very impressive by Jorgensen today. I mean, on paper, not a race that you'd put him down to be really up there in, and right at the fore of things, brilliant.
10 k's to go. Will the cat and mouse games begin? I have just discovered why Wout van Aert went across the Tegan but first. He's apparently won some bathroom furniture. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> I think they must need a bathroom doing, I guess. Well, he's got the bathroom sorted. If he wins it, he might be able to afford a new kitchen as well. Flipping heck. Of course, he won this race last year and he settled in again. Yombo yep. Visma had their numbers, but it was Alpacinta Koenigke with the first to attack. And it this... was Mathieu van der Poel, wasn't it, playing at being Tom Boner, and he might be about to finish it off like it. Well, this might be the day that Pogaccia wins a bike race without a single tuft of hair poking out of his helmet as well. Not a single tuft is poking out that lid today. Well, the superstitious viewers among us might be a bit worried for his chances now. They might be, or he's gone for the extra aero gains and then he can be more confident. <laughs> This group's working really well. But they need the front group to mess about if they have any chance, really. That's been done before. And again, 9Ks, minute and three seconds. They have to ride, they have to hope. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're led by Mate Mohoric. At the minute, we'll see a fourth place being the best achievable, exactly what he achieved last year. We still had to make do without Albert Torres today to help them in the domestic department. Caught up in a crash on Wednesday, broke his collarbone. He's gone back home to rest and recuperate. We've got two strong riders in that chase. And another half a kilometre ticks by on the way back to Harold Becker. And the gap is a minute. It's coming down, isn't it? But I don't think they're going to get within touching distance of these guys. I think once they start to... They're riding at a sensible pace, but oh, I, I do hope there's attacks from them. I hope they just don't come down to a spin, just purely for selfish viewing. Um, but I think that gap will probably end up at around 40 seconds at the finish by the time these guys have faffed about a bit at the finish. Honestly, I mean, Pogaccia's the one who really has to attack, doesn't he? Yeah, well, you'd think so, wouldn't you? We just don't know how much he's backing himself within that sprint. But yeah, Rob, I'm, I'm completely with you. 100% he has to try. He has to try and deaden the legs a bit. The only issue is with that is that if he's attacking these guys, he needs to go all in. He needs to go like he's sprinting through a brick wall. Because after that, if these riders are able to respond, if there's a counter-attack from either of the other two, that is going to be hard to follow. So he needs to make sure if he's attacking and he's attacking full gas, he has to make sure it sticks, because otherwise there's the risk of them getting counter-attacked by a Van der Poel or a Wout van Aert. And if you're on the limit, we saw it in, in San Remo last week, if you're on the limit and then one person goes after you've just eased up a bit, near on impossible. I don't think Van Aert's got the legs to do it, though. It's gone under a minute now. Seven and a half kilometres to the line. There's commitment behind. They're still riding well here, but maybe thoughts are starting to turn to what's going to happen over the next few kilometres. Adam, for anybody tuning in for the first time here, of course, we're banging on about these big actors. The cycling fans who watch week in, week out will know about the strengths and weaknesses of these riders. Who's the best rider who can back their own sprint, though, here? In, today? I'd say Van der Poel. I'd say today, in the current form it is in, what he did last week in San Remo, I would say Van der Poel. Fresh, all of them absolutely flying on form, in their best form, no complications, no nothing. Van Aert, I think he's simply quicker. Um, but I'd say Van der Poel today is the fastest. Today, Pogaccia hoping to become just the second rider ever to win in Harold Becker and win the Tour de France. In fact, he's the first rider to come to this race after winning the Tour for 24 years. 
Bjarne Rees was the last to do that. Of course, Geraint Thomas won this race before he then seriously concentrated more on the general classification. Maybe it'll be a turning point for Pog. Maybe he'll turn into a classics rider. He'll do the opposite of G. <laughs> Well, he can do everything, I think we've seen that. Little bit of deja vu here, riding in towards the finish of one of these races, of course, on debut in the Ronda. Last year, he was on there. We saw one of the very few angry moments of Pogacar's career so far, when he was banging the bars and he was unhappy. I was quite pleased to see that, actually. Just show there was a slightly different side to him. Mm. He is a very friendly character, isn't he? He's a very likeable character, but you never see that anger really from him. You never really see Van 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 Aert or Van der Poel either. You never see any of these three really getting angry publicly, which I'm sure that they do behind the scenes. But yeah, it was nice to see that side of him. A bit of, um, well, it was aggression, but a bit of character there as well. Van Aert and Van der Poel have raced most of their careers in parallel on the cross field. They've come to the road in these big one-day races. They've raced 15 times together. We we're talking about who we might be able to expect to do something here. 10 times out of those 15 times, it's been found the pool who's finished ahead of Fanat. Mm. But of course, seconds. that's just painting a picture here. It means nothing in the context of what might happen, which we're about to find out. Adam just says 51 seconds, it's coming down, but so are the kilometres, Adam. They turn left here, and we're at 5Ks to go. Pog on his drops, coming out the corner, looking round, Wout van Aert on his drops, van der Poel still on the hood still. They're all getting ready, they're all on the drops waiting for that attack, except van der Poel. Headwind Five now as Ks. well. We twist and turn, Adam. Twist and turn and into a headwind as well. This is going to be a very late attack. They go through basically a housing estate <laughs> towards the finish of this race as well. And I think we've seen riders go away there in the past. We've seen them leave it right till the last minute, watching each other, not wanting to jump with something, trying to let the other rider do it. I think if one of the riders were to go now, it's just too far to go and with a headwind. It's almost impossible against the, the riders. Doesn't matter who it is within that front group there. It's not possible to stay away. 5k to go for those riders if they were attacked now. They've got to leave it late, and I'm looking at Pog. 43 seconds. 400 metres of a difference on the road. Four behind, I have to keep riding. And we're now back to town. This is where the day began. In Harlbecker. Industrial town in Flanders. In the hot land of professional cycling in this part of the world. Close to some of those famous climbs, sections of cobbles that we've seen all day. They fought over, down, left, right, battled the wind. They now battle each other. Three riders remain. Wat van Aert in the yellow and black. Today Pogacar in the black and white. And in the blue, Mathieu for the pool. Four kilometres, three riders. Two who can rely on their sprint historically. One who's hard in a very small group, like we've seen in Liège. But can he do it in this company in a sprint? Tadej Pogacar. Oh, here we go. Now then. A little seated acceleration there. Pogaccia not pulling through on the front, moving across. Just waiting, looking. They're starting to play, they're starting to look at each other. No one wants to keep riding on the front. They want to try and recover from this sprint. They want to try and force each other's hand. Pogaccia laying off the back, look. Laying off the back of this. Is he going to have a run at them out of this corner? Yes, he, he is. is. He is. And here goes today, Pogaccia. Today, Pogaccia makes his move with 3.4 kilometers to go. We knew he had to try. We knew he had to move. There's a reaction, and the first attack is brought back. The cat and mouse games have started with just over three kilometers to go. It's just the efficiency of the two riders behind. In the, you, 
you rarely see someone who's been able to respond to attack perfectly in the right gear the whole time. They can jump out the saddle, but it's almost with Van der Poel and Van Aert through that cycle across, always being in that efficient gear, that they're able to just be in that right gear to accelerate as quick as possible, minimise the effort and the effort they have to make to chase someone. Just under three Ks. Not working either now, Rob. All just waiting for Big Look, Van der Poel coming through. Wout van Aert gambling. I like to see Wout van Aert gamble a little bit. Three of the riders of our times, and we're coming into a famous finale in one of the biggest races of the season. They call this the Little Ronda, the dress rehearsal, but it's been a main event in its own right today. This is getting nicely set up for a little Pogaccia thing. Wout van Aert has, I think he sort of said, look, I'm not the strongest here. You two have, you've dropped me once already. I've been able to get back onto you, but attacks are going to start to come. You two need to fight it out. And where he is right now, perfect position. You can see the attacking, you can see the rise accelerating. Is he going to follow van der Poel or is he going to leave a little gap for Pogaccia? We've seen this in this race so many times down the years. Last year it was van Aert and Laporte in exhibition style. And Kispar Askren won a couple of years ago. We had a small group on these roads, and it was one move that killed off the competition. They watch, they wait, as each rider goes past. Will Van der Poel and Van Aert both trust their sprint? Will they try to surprise? We're now two kilometers from the finale. Wout well, Van Aert trusts his sprints. He wants to be at the back. He wants to be on Van der Poel's wheel. He wants him to start early in that sprint as well. It's a long, long sprint. Headwind at the minute, but Wout well, Van Aert, where he's sitting, look, I think, ooh, an attack from behind from Jorgensen. Marvi Starr looking for a fourth place. And Matteo Jorgensen, who's been out in the front of this race early on, when there are about 90 kilometres still to go, is playing at that game again. And they could have the numbers to do that. As we go to one and a half kilometers to go, another twist, a left hand turn this time, and it's Fonda Pool leading for now. Pog again, Pog again. Pogacar Pog again. just leaving that room, isn't he? We wait, he goes, he's up onto the pedals, and he moves left of the road this time. They have to react to a second time. Fonda Pool tries to get there, he's on the wheel. Pogacar sits down, he knows he's unable to wriggle away for a second time. It's almost a telltale, isn't it? That little gap growing a little bit, just laying off, waiting. But look how quick they got on him. No hesitation. No one wants to win that now. Van Aert letting Van der Poel do the gap, sitting down, recovering. Look at the gears, spinning away, freewheeling, spinning away. I'd be surprised if Van der Poel pulls through here. I'm, trying, I'm sure that Van der Poel will force Pog to lead it out. Wout Van Aert, where we think he wants to be, at the back on Van der Poel's wheel, hoping that he might start the sprint early. One kilometre to go in the Edri Press. The E3 Saxo Classic, Harald Becker, the destination. Three of the biggest names in the sport are at the front. Tadej Pogaccia, two-time Tour de France winner. Mathieu van der Poel, monument winner just last weekend. And Wart van Aert, winner of this very race 12 months ago. No Slovenian has ever won the E3. Tadej Pogaccia, you'd have to say, a rarity in this sport has to be an underdog here because he's up against two fast men. He's there in the white. They're coming into the finish straight. Van der Poel is looking at Van Aert. On paper, on his day, the fastest of the three, waiting at the back. But we know that Van der Poel has the form. They have the time gap now. They have the seconds, and it's Pogaccia who launches the sprint early. Pogaccia trying to surprise them. Van der Poel coming through the center. Van Aert hitting the front now on the right-hand side. It's Wout Van Aert trying to defend his title. It's wheel to wheel. It's a big battle, but it's Wout Van Aert who wins it. Wout Van Aert, the first man to defend his title here in over a decade. Three cobbled races in Belgium for Jumbo Fisma. Win number three in E3. This time it wasn't quite the exhibition. But it's Wout van Aert who's got the dress rehearsal down. He's read his lines to perfection. And with the Ronde van Vlaanderen nine days away, we wait to see whether finally for him it'll be all right on the night. A good fourth place for Jürgensen. Fifth place, I think, might be going to Movistar as well there as we look behind. Ivan Garcia Cortina in the top five, but all the headlines will be taken by Wout van Aert.
clever racing, mature, intelligent racing, waiting, not panicking, and watching, trusting that ability, believing in his sprint. Wout van Aert beats Mathieu van der Poel and Tadej Pogacar. And the battle between these lives on. At the weekend, it was for the pool. Now it's for Nart. And Pogacar's in the mix as well. A dream scenario won by a wonder rider. What for Nart? What a race, Adam. I am biased, but I love Wout Van Aert. He's, <laughs> I love all three of the riders at the front, but wow, I don't know what it is about him, but I love that. And you can see how much that meant to Wout, slamming the bars, carrying through the cloud, full of adrenaline. That, I think that meant a lot to him, beating those two in that situation after San Remo last weekend, after the form that, out of those three, looking the weakest, really, but backing himself, knowing what he can do. And I've said this, I said this last week, Wout van Aert has never looked like he was willing to lose a race to win it. To me, today was a different Wout van Aert. He looked like he was treating it like he was almost the weaker rider and risking to lose it. And that win there, that sprint, it was a repeat of Flanders with a Pogaccia on there a few years ago when he tried to come up against Wout, had to come up against Van der Poel, got right next to him, but didn't get the better of him. This time, he wasn't making that mistake. After being forced to suffer up and down the cobbles and hills, Wout van Aert wins in a hugely powerful sprint. Mathieu van der Poel is beaten. Today, Pongacaccia finishes in third. Jorgensen fourth, Garcia fifth, Kung, Mohoric, Madwas, Kao and Ganna. What a top ten. What a race. Wout van Aert is the winner. Well, not since Fabian Cancellara had anybody come here and defended their title. Wat Fanat was able to do that.